All right, Gemini, welcome into June. This is your reading. This is for Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, Gemini, for you guys. So lots of stuff going on in June. Um, I did a video about this, and mutable signs like Gemini are very, very impacted uh, by what's going on, uh, especially the Saturn, the Saturn uh, retrograde and the Neptune retrograde. So the Saturn retrograde is happening uh, June 17th, Neptune retrograde, the end of the month, June 30th. And what's going to be happening, it lands in your 10th house. So that can be about your career. It's really about 10th house, 4th house. If you think about astrology, everything's about balance. Okay, so it's really about 10th house, 4th house. It's work-life balance. So 10th house is our career, 4th house is our home. And so there can be a little bit of, um, in that retrograde time period, there can be a little bit of going inside and seeing if what you're doing is working for you, okay? So that's a really big part of this situation of the sitch. We also have Pluto, oh, one just jumped out. We also have Pluto going retrograde. Uh, well, it is retrograde since May 1st, but it's backing into Capricorn. And for you, that's backing into the eighth house. So anything that you've had secrets around, um, you may have to revisit those. Okay. Is that really working for you? So are these things working for you? So let's do the reading and we'll see where we go. We'll see if this energy pops up again. This is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Desert Passage. Stepping into power, you are strong beyond measure. Watching clouds, lie back, rest and relax. Oh, I love this. All right, so um, I just feel like some of you valiant courage, take action with passion, word up. So <laughs> Gemini moon right here, right here, and North Node. So I'm here to tell you that I feel like you might be tested a little bit um, in terms of your strength in terms of standing up for yourself, maybe that happens at work, maybe it happens at home, right? We're talking about work-life balance. And so it can be in both of those two arenas. And I'm also talking about, you know, the Pluto energy of transformation going into the eighth, back into the eighth house of, um, in your Capricorn placement. And boy, that is the house of transformation. So uh, Capricorn can be very much a stickler for convention and if you want to hold on to some kind of convention, you keep secrets around something. All right. If you're wanting to really make sure that that convention stays and it's enduring, then there's a lot of workarounds that might be happening for you. And that can be really, um, it can end up being really toxic. Okay. So let's see where we go. My eyes twitching like crazy. Knight of Pentacles. Yes, I've taken magnesium. Nine of Pentacles. Wow. The Ten of Swords the Ace of Cups, Hanged Man, and the Eight of Swords. My goodness. Oh, okay, King of Swords. I like that. So um, I feel like you're doing a lot of really good work on yourself. It may cause you to end a relationship that has been enduring, a very long relationship that has been really part of your life for a really long time, okay? Um, I just think you're seeing how toxic it is. And... It's because this person has a mindset that is really stuck. Okay. There's a super stuck mindset. I just see you're getting super clear. Like I like the retrogrades because, you know, a lot of people don't like retrogrades. They're thinking, oh, I'm going backwards. It's really not that. It's an internal shift. Okay. So it's about you looking internal and asking yourself, is what I am doing getting me where I want to go. And sometimes people use, I'm not saying you're doing this, but like if you come across uh, people who are narcissistic or anything like that, uh, they do whatever works for them. Okay. And when that happens, oh, this was on the top. I'm sorry. And when they do that, it's like, there's no problem. I'm doing what works for me. But you guys, I know the difference between someone who's, who's aware and conscious. You see the patterns, you see the things and it's like the sole pain that you get from doing workarounds to make things work for you, the way you have to kind of contort yourself um, isn't really um, the path. That's showing you what the not path is. You get me? So if you're like, I got to squeeze myself into this little box in order for this person to love me, 
and uh and not not be so loud or not have such big hair or whatever it is okay whatever it is it's contorting you to have you not be your true self you may not have realized that you have been doing that because sometimes it can be super incremental little tiny things over time so i had uh, a long time ago a relationship with a person who was super critical and but they had a very dry sense of humor it was very i you know there was that dry sense of humor and i really enjoyed that sense of humor but over time i was like he was chipping away at me and when i got out of it i was like oh i can breathe now wow look at how long my arms are. Seriously. And there's like a sense of relief. If, if so feel into what it would be like to not be jamming yourself into this box. And if you feel relief, then it is toxic, my friend. Okay. So four of wands, two of swords, the lover's card. There's your card. High priestess, beautiful energy here. The empress. Wow. We, uh, wheel of fortune. Oh my word. Holy cow. Four of cups. We got a bunch of fours here. No, just the two. Eh. Six of wands. Three of wands. So I do feel like the energy of internal and external is going to be pretty loud in June. We've been just talking about that. Um, High Priestess connects to Cancer, Cancerian energy. Empress connects to Venus, which is Taurus and Libra, ruled by Taurus and Libra. You're ruled um, by Mercury. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So Mercury is about communication. Like, are you, are you really speaking your truth? Are you really doing that? Or to, in order to be loved, are you jamming yourself into a box? Are you like, my mother used to say it, and this is probably a message from Mary T. She used to say to me all the time, uh, which was, as I look back on it now, I'm like, oh my God, um, peace at any cost. And it wasn't until I grew up um, and actually woke up that I really understood that that was a terrible modeling of how a relationship, a healthy relationship works. That was a terrible modeling. I'm going to call her out on that one. The four of cups here is what gets people stuck. And so people escape. People try to escape. And that can be any kind of addictions. I mean, we do have Saturn going retrograde in Pisces and Neptune going retrograde in Pisces. So there can be a looking at oneself for any kind of addictions or any kind of um, things you have. And Gemini, you're a mutable sign. So all the mutable signs are involved in this. I have a, a video that I posted for June. All the mutable signs are are being um, uh, called out on this, okay? Because it's in Pisces and Pisces is a mutable sign. So Pisces, right? Pisces and uh, Virgo, Sag and Gemini, you're all being kind of called out um, to take a look at yourself. And you in particular, Gemini, can look at yourself in terms of the work workplace or the home life, 10th house, 4th house. Those are houses that are being really impacted by a lot of things for you right now. And it is my philosophy that Pisces is a partner with Virgo. The opposite energy does exist. And if it the opposite energy doesn't exist, then things can get out of whack. So if you're having an issue uh, dealing with Saturn and retrograde in Pisces and Neptune and retrograde in Pisces in your 10th house, then you add a little Virgo. And what does that mean? That means that you focus on your health and well-being and you see patterns, you see things that are causing you or that are the underlying um, reason for any kind of addictions, patterns in your life. What are the patterns that are holding on to you? You could have somebody reflecting to you patterns that need to go, right? You're not, it's not you, but this person in your, well, it is you, but this person in your life is a mirror, okay? And essentially, if you're allowing for some things that are super unhealthy in your relationship or in your work life, then those are the things that are going to be held up to you in June. And Saturn going retrograde and Mercury going ret or not Mercury, uh, um, Neptune. Saturn going retrograde is like, are you doing the work? Or are you doing spiritual bypassing? Are you doing the work or not? 
Neptune going in retrograde are is are you really seeing this clearly or not? Okay, so that's that's likely what's to show up for you in June. This is a destined faded month. Okay, um, this pat well this um, this astrological shift. This is a big moment for Gemini. Uh, because it is about self-reflection. It's going to eat up most of the rest of the year. November, December is when those go back in direct fashion. All right, so there's a lot of reflection going on. Two of Cups, Ten of Cups, Ten of Wands, Six of Cups. What am I doing in my relationships? And it could be with bosses and stuff because Tenth House, Fourth House. Um, in my relationships, what am I doing? What am I codependently doing to keep the peace? What am I doing? How am I contorting myself? And you get this King of Swords like, oh, for comedy's sake, I see it. Right? And we're not doing that anymore. We're not going to do that. In order to have love, that pattern needs to go. And I feel like there is a little bit of look at you. Because the what you have been able to overcome in your life or what you've been able to do is no nothing short of a miracle. Uh, it can be coming in the future. What you're able to do with this situation will be nothing short of a miracle. Okay. So especially if you're dealing with any kind of super duper hidden toxic behaviors, what is going on behind the scenes when that... Um, when Pluto, Pluto has been transiting very slowly, albeit in Aquarius, it went retrograde in uh, early March, sorry, May. Why do I keep saying that? In early May. Oh, because it transited. Okay, I gotcha. Um, there was another transit that was intra that is uh, relevant in March, but I'm going to talk about, um, yeah, because it went, uh, Pluto went into Aquarius in March and it moved like a degree, maybe, and then it's now retrograding. So it takes a while for it to get out of Aquarius. So it's getting out of Aquarius by June 11th. Then it's going to be back in Capricorn. So um, Pluto is the destroyer. Pluto is the transformational energy of the tower. Higher octave of Mars. So it's not subtle. It's not subtle. So there could be some kind of experience that you're like, I can't do this anymore. This is too toxic. But when we have things being so incremental, sometimes we don't see it. Now, how is it that you're gonna see this? Because I like the lover's card. Someone may, came into, may come into your life who is uh, who has not been kind of incorporated into this pattern. Like, you know how they, uh, out of the mouths of babes, that a kid will come in, you know, like emperor's new, new new clothes. The kid's like, hey, the king's naked. And everyone's like, oh, oh, but it's true, right? It's a little bit like that. There can be somebody who kind of calls you out on this pattern. Nine of cups, fool, page of pentacles, and the king of wands. Learning from this pattern, seeing it, taking the off ramp of it, no more codependency, no more jamming yourself in a box. Uh, there can be a person who comes back from your past a long time ago, a, a friend from childhood or something like that, or an old um, friend, um, old boyfriend, girlfriend, something like that. It's like, they're like, oh, look at that. And you're like, wow. Like you didn't even realize it had gotten that bad. And so you're going to overcome this. And I feel like you're receiving a lot of help. This person that's coming back in is somebody who is, who does love you very much. And I feel like this is a person who's like heaven sent, like an angel that's coming to go like, Hey, so let's continue. I'm going to continue on with this reading. This person could be a fire sign. Uh, Aries, Leo, Sag, could be a fire sign. This person could also be somebody who, who's just a fantastic teacher. I see Taurus and Libra. I see Cancer. You know, there's a lot of stuff here. So something big shifts in this next month. And it's a huge, huge wake up call. Okay, let's see where we go with it. Link is in the description box. If you want to continue on, if this is your story, I'll see you over there. 
All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.